Hey guys, welcome. It's time to start Bollocks Talks and Tangents. It's Thursday at 6.34. And in case you were watching the Mike Davis show and I was wearing a different shirt, I wore an orange shirt last week. I forgot to check. I usually check Thursday mornings, yeah. but we got up at like 4.30 this morning and I didn't check. And I put on the same shirt I wore last Thursday. So now I have a different shirt on. There you go. So, But I'm not topless. No. So... <laughs> All right, Blake is itching his belly button, oh which is goodness. making everyone uncomfortable in the studio. Oh, my goodness. Um, but welcome in, guys. Exciting show tonight. We're here doing a show, and if we're not here tomorrow, you know one of these organizations came and got uh, Lenny and I. Blake, uh -huh. I think you're going to be okay, but we're not promising anything yeah. at all. Oh, how um, too bad. We're Just doing... Don't answer your phone. We're doing agencies, intelligence agencies around the world, mm -hmm. uh, the history of those, which ones are considered the best, the worst? We have some uh, word origins. Mine has nothing to do with this because mm -hmm. I was going to do the word spook. Okay. And uh, the origin sucked. So um, <laughs> I decided not to do that. And I'm going to throw you a baseball one because we're coming to the end of baseball season. In case you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm throwing down all my notes at my feet. <laughs> I do do research every once in a while. Uh, Lenny, tell, tell the nice people what... We're drinking tonight. We're drinking Uncle Nearest tonight. All right. I haven't tasted it yet. Cheers. Have you already tasted yours? I've already finished a you, bottle. You did it. You, you, uh, you, know, you I did finished it. a bottle of this already. Before the show? I mean, when the show started? Well, you know, I have an Uber outside, wow. so I'll, okay. be, I'll be okay. Hmm. Uncle Nearest Green. Okay. Yeah, that's more of a whiskey than a bourbon. Yeah. yeah it's, well, it's, you know, it's Tennessee. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sipping, sipping whiskey. It's got a little bite. Yes. Yeah, it does. It's, it's it's got, it can be a little hot. It got, it got a little bit right here. Um, right here, Bert. But Uncle Nearest Good flavor. was the first black master distiller in the United States. Okay. And he was the gentleman who taught, drum roll please, Jack Daniels how to make whiskey. Well, I knew it was from Tennessee because the three stars up here on mm -hmm. the, whatever you call the, where the, the spout is. Um, you know, but the it, neck, yeah, the, the neck, mm -hmm. the neck, I guess. It's, yeah. That makes the most sense. <laughs> I'm new here. Um, that's right. You know, but it's 1856. It is that when he did it? It was before yeah. civil, uh, the civil war. Was he still yeah. a slave when he did this? Oh yeah. Okay. And his name was what? Uncle Nearest, Uncle Nearest Green. Uncle Nearest yeah. Green. His first name was Nearest. Uh, I think his first name was, yeah. But Uncle Nearest... Taught Jack Daniels how to make whiskey. So was he from? Nathan, was he from Nathan Nearest Green? Nathan Nearest Green. Was he from Lynchburg also? That I do not know. Let's see if it says on the bottle. Um, it doesn't. But there you go. All right. That's he. It's not going to help our friends at home, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's, you know which one is he? I'm just joking. <laughs> All right. Uh, we got to talk about our amazing sponsors, our amazing sponsors. Speaking of whiskeys, uh, no place better. St. Augustine Distillery and City Gate Spirits. And when I say no place better, they're number one in the country. Can't beat them. Yep. Nobody's better. All right? We're not lying about that. No. Also, me hands Irish Pub, Reggie and the gang over there, wonderful people. Um, you know, they, they just take great care of you, have amazing... Uh, whiskey selections themselves. Oh, very good. Um, a great wine selection. Uh, amazing food. Oyster bar upstairs. So yummy. Music out back. I mean, it's it's like its own little Disney World for adults. It is, absolutely. Yeah, you know? and great food for kids and an amazing view. That's it. You get up yeah. on the porch and up top, and you've got a beautiful view of the, 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 the bay. Um, I was actually, I may have mentioned this before a couple times, but I was actually up there, timed it out, was there for a rocket launch. Oh, yeah. And it's fabulous because you're sitting up there, you're having your cocktail, and you can see the, the rocket go by. Mm -hmm. It's not, yeah, a bad, not a terrible place. No, not at all. Oh, there's yeah, nothing Blake, terrible about that place Blake, at all. Blake, you, you, where do we go for rocket launches? It's, it's not a terrible place, is it? We go to the top of the treasure building. Oh, well. <laughs> it's good to, good to know somebody. <laughs> I'm telling you right there, mm. that's the spot. Okay. That's the spot. And, um, but you don't have the same... Group experience right. that you do at, at the, well, we the who's and the Oz. I, I think that one of the best things about a rocket launch is watching it with someone who's never seen one before. Yeah. I think I, I think that is the coolest thing because they have no idea what to expect. And when uh, boosters fall off and mm -hmm. stuff like that, they didn't realize you could see that all the way from Coming here. To, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. And you can see them. Yeah, yeah we walk down. We walk down to the uh, end of our street and go onto the beach and watch mm -hmm. it there. And it's it's different because if you watch it on the beach, um, 
you, you kind of miss it, but if you watch it from the ramp over, you can see right from ignition. Okay. And follow them up. If you're on the beach, sometimes you can't quite catch the ignition, and then you got to wait a second till it goes up. But yeah, it's great. And then you got to figure out which way it's going, whether it's going east, west, north. Um, Have south. you ever, ever you ever went down there for a lunch? To Titusville, to, to Cape Canaveral? Yeah. yeah no. Yeah. I'm all so, Yeah, we, we, so we did. We, 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 thought about, we, we, we almost got there a little bit closer, but we were a little bit late, and it, and it closed off the bridges. Yeah, we were about four or five miles away. Yeah, yeah. So, and, so. But we were actually 10 miles away. We were at the Max Brewer Bridge. Okay, so, I mean, but but we were up did on you, the bridge, and we could see everything. It was, did, it was did, actually did the perfect. You, you didn't feel a rumble by, that far away. Did we you? did. Yeah, you felt yeah, the rumble. Yeah, and, yeah. and the, We actually heard the song booms the when cool, we the, yeah. the coolest thing was is how long it took the sound to get to yeah. you yeah like you you could hear it, but it was already halfway up in the air before yep. it actually they they, uh, yep. they i mean they, the delay of the sound i think was the coolest thing being that close yeah um, but, but but i personally think like since it was since when we went there it was a spacex launch so so, so they had the boosters land back on the launch site that was right. cool yeah then all, all, all of a sudden you have like the, so, so, so you see like the booster coming back the flame lit to slow itself down then land then you hear the sonic booms go yeah. off. That, that that's honestly the coolest part right there. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. It, it was it was really really cool. All right. Um, that's enough about me. Hands. <laughs> right. We went off on a tangent during the during our reads. Right. All right. Um, a. Bear Kresge and Associates. They're simply the best CPAs in town. Um, Billy. I talk to him almost every single day. You know that. Tells you what a great accountant is. He talks to me every well, how single much day. Trouble you're in. No, it's just uh, the fact that he takes my call. Right. You know. No, but he does. He does our nonprofits. He does right. um, okay. my business setups. He does my businesses. He does my personal. You know. A Bear Kresge and Associates. They're the best in town. And if you think you can save money by doing your own taxes, you're wrong. Oh, yeah. Don't do that. Call the professionals. They know what they're doing. All right. Uh, St. Augustine Pirate Museum. Arr, excuse me, sir. Today, do you know what today is, is it's Talk Like a Pirate Day. Talk lady. Like a Pirate yes, Day. Scurvy dog. Arr, 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 arr. I don't know which language I was talking. So well, um, Pirates were multilingual. Yeah. They yeah. were. Yeah. They were. They were, they were, they were, they were a, a band of uh, their own. Mm hmm. Many multi multinational uh, multi ethnic, and a lot of people don't realize realize how many uh, runaway slaves were pirates. Sure, there were women that were pirates, a couple and of them for sure. and uh, you know in that golden era. era. Mm -hmm. Is it era or era? Uh, we'll go with era because if it's an era, you drop the ball. Mm. Okay, era, <laughs> but wouldn't it be spelled E A R? If it's an era, <laughs> well, it depends on depends on your pronunciation. Okay, that's why I'm at. Look, I can't spell. I, I don't spell. Like, is it era or era? We're gonna go with what you say. For, for like, so I'm gonna say I uh, normally uh, normally spells like E R A for era. Is like, it like, era, like, era? like like you're like era. like you're like saying era? Like 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 you're saying era. Wait, 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 hold on here. Taylor Swift, the Eras Tour. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that should be the arbiter. All right, we're we're letting her decide everything these days. Yes, um, we are. All right. Apparently, she's but called, it is talk like a place for the Kansas City Chiefs. It is talk like a pirate day, um, and we want to celebrate uh, with the Pirate Museum. They're amazing. They have over eight hundred artifacts. Get over there, go see them. All right, uh, Kaiser's place. Deli and Market. Another wonderful food. Wonderful people. Um, stop in. Ask for the bollocks. Ask for half turkey, half pastrami. Um, I think that's the way to go, mm -hmm. and have it pressed. And there will so. be, there will be a warning, but I will be making a guest appearance there next week, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So next Thursday, I can bring dinner home from. I can I can bring us bring lunch us lunch from. I can bring us dinner from. You can there. bring us our own personal yep, bollocks and, and a white street for Blake. Yep. All right. Um, all right, and uh, last but not least, give me a call. Coquina Coast Realty, commercial, uh, residential, rental properties. If you want me to manage your, your <laughs> business, let me know. I'm there for you. Yeah, because so, you, need, you, you need another feather in your hat. That's what I need. I need another job. You, you, you got a little free time. You know, what did you guys think of Mike's uh, bio on me? I thought it was going to be a lot worse. I thought it was very, very loving. Yeah, I thought... I, 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 loving I, and complimentary I, I, and accurate. It started to spiral yeah. in, in the middle, and yeah. and, and, he, and I, I was like, oh, we're going down, we're brought going down, and then he brought it back, and it was very caring. Yeah. Um, yeah, but he, he left Look. out... He left out our blended family and, well, you know, some of, some of the key people in my life. So 
Well, you know, think of it this way. Consider yourself winning an, an Emmy and forgetting to mention your your spouse, your spouse and your parents. Oh, that, that's I, all. That's something I, I could see myself doing. Am I actually a key dad or 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 Yeah, I would say you are for the at least for the last 23 years. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I don't know. You and your brother, I mean, I, I, I can't con consider, I don't know who would be more key than you and your brother in the last 23 years. Blue? No, Blue's only been around seven. So you're, you're winning. Look at you. You got staring over the dog. You're winning, you're winning on longevity. You know? Okay, that, that's not helpful. <laughs> hang, hang on. But if, if we do Blue in people years, he's out. At 49. <laughs> exactly. Oh. You're, you were so close, Blake. Oh. All right. Yeah, you're still winning that one, buddy. All right. Um, it's time to get into it. Uh, word origins. Okay. What did you do for word origins? As, or because mine is nothing related. Yeah, is yours you, anything related to? Of course it is. All right. So I looked up and, and I was on a time crunch. I had a ridiculously crazy day today. Mm -hmm. Maeve is doing great Everything for those well, people though. that, um, right, you know, and, and thank you for all the texts and the people that asked. And, and um, because I missed good. the morning show today, she had a, a minor procedure and she, we call her Brave Maeve now. Um, she's <laughs> oh, just, God. she's just a rock Don't star. Encourage her. Yeah. She's just a rock. Oh, no, she doesn't need it. She's, that's what she's, I'm saying. You know? she's, she's, she's our Brave Maeve. Um, but, um, so happy that that went well, and thank you for everybody who reached out. Um, you know, had a rough day yesterday at the city uh, hard meeting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there, there's going to be some further comments about that, but uh, it was it was a rough one. Okay, it was one of those where appointed volunteer boards sometimes uh, overstep. Get a little, and I feel feel like that happened yesterday mm -hmm. uh, on multiple multiple levels, um, but. You know, we had to deal with that, and then uh, we met with a speaker of the house, wonderful mm -hmm. man, Paul Renner. Mm -hmm. He's been uh, in the House of Representatives for us for uh, nine years over in Tallahassee. Uh, he's part of the reason, one of the main reasons, and the drivers of the money we received uh, for bu purchasing Veterans Village. Right. He his schedule finally it, allowed him to finally allowed him to get there and see where he put good money and he's been so busy he didn't realize we had already placed 19 veterans wow so we're like we're so happy you came but we have four rooms that are down we're trying to get money from the repairs that has already been allocated to us and we're trying to get that released from the state so we can get those four rooms uh, available mm -hmm. so we have we have multiple rooms we have seven people still on a waiting list that waiting list could go away if get the money if the money was let go from the government side. Are these, are these single rooms or they, they have to bunk up? Okay. No, they're single rooms. Good. They're single rooms. So we do have a, two couples. Well, that's fine. Uh, that's we fine. do have two couples that share share space. Yeah. Um, they're both they're both uh, veterans. Okay. Both. I mean, all four of the two right. couples right. are veterans. Everybody served. So everybody everybody served. So, um, you know, we're trying to do the best we can, but it it hurts yeah, my heart. you man. hurts my heart that we can't take care of. People we know that are in need because it gets caught up in government ease, and that's one of the things we're trying to release. And the speaker, pets. speaker gave us his ear, and uh, we felt like uh, we hit his heart, and hopefully something happens with it. So yeah. we're excited about that. All right. Um, you know, so also, I didn't spend a lot of time on my word origin. Well, you had a busy day, and I usually have a little bit of a break between the two shows. Right. I didn't get that. So I'm going to use one, and I'm going to use one that's uh, I know the reference to because it's a baseball thing. Sure. And baseball bin. Very, very good to me. Very, very good to me. Once and you get a little insulation on that wild card. Yeah, yeah. No, well, it's because that's because of the Reds. Well, they helped. Yeah, you, yeah. you rolled over for us. Thank yeah. you very much. No, Appreciate no, no, that. no. We we took out the Braves yesterday. For I know, and I appreciate not yesterday, that too. two days ago. Right. Yeah, two two days but, ago. But, but, so but but unfortunately, yesterday and today was not very good. We to lost us. today too. Fifteen to three, whoa! And now, and now, unfortunately, my dad put in a bet earlier this year where we we're, 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 we're basically the Reds have to win eighty-two games oh, yeah. this year. Uh, they, had on, play, on. they had to play five hundred. I put that bet in in January. Yeah. No, I put it in in the spring. It was like March, right? Yes. Yeah, I put it in in March in, in Vegas when I was there. I was like, okay, they're going to play five hundred, so they're going to be about five games under five hundred. I lost the bet. Uh, now, now, hold on. Now, 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 you still have a chance. You still have a chance. Still a week to but go. You, but you still have to win the, all the rest of the we games now. We got to win seven in a row. Eight in a row. Well, you're not playing the Don't Mets, make it worse. 
All right. A little hot streak here. So I decided to do a baseball <clears throat> reference because sure. baseball playoffs is coming up. One of mm-hmm. my favorite times is baseball mm-hmm. playoffs. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm enjoying football season, but now my quarterback's hurt, so I'm not enjoying it as much on the pro level. My college team's looking good. Um, so baseball, southpaw. All right. You understand what a southpaw is. I do. Like, you understand what a southpaw is. Correct? Hold on. Hold on. Let me hold this microphone in the right hand. Yes, I do. All right. He's holding the microphone <laughs> in his left hand. There you go. All right. A southpaw is a left-handed pitcher. Mm-hmm. Um, and do you have a, any clue of where a south, southpaw actually came from? I used to know this at one point in time, but I'll let you elucidate it, Mr. Baseball. All right. And, and before there was lights in baseball. Mm-hmm. You would have to configure a baseball field where the sun was not directly in the batter's face. Mm -hmm. All right. And the most ideal situation, if a left handed pitcher was throwing from the mound, his left hand would be coming from the south or towards the south. So the configuration of baseball fields all kind of matched up at that time before there was lights because the way the sun set and different things. And that is where the term Southpaw came from, a beat writer. Uh, I believe it was a beat writer in Chicago in the early 1800s used the term. And it just happened to be, well, he's facing the South, and he, he just kind of was like, okay, I'm going to call him a Southpaw. Okay. And it took off in sports writers, yeah. and it became, you know, Southpaw supporting, kinda, the, kinda lefty. supporting the Chicago Nine, you know, right. and... and that's where it came from. Yeah. It was just it had everything to do with the configuration of the ball fields at that time. Because mm-hmm. right now it doesn't matter as much because you play night games. Right. And the stadiums block most of the sun and all that stuff. Those didn't exist in the, in the late 1800s, no. early 1900s. And that's where it came from. Very good. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, then now goes for pretty much any left any left right, and, and, Well, and now, it's, anything, now, yeah. well, now it even includes, like, boxing, you know, yeah. a, a boxer's yeah. a southpaw. But it came from baseball in the configura- yeah, sure. configuration of the of the ball field. Yep. So. All right. Seeing as we're delving into espionage agencies, spy services, and mm-hmm. spooks in general, I chose the word espionage. Woo! There you go. Ow. Spelling it a while. The practice of spying or using spies to obtain information about plans and activities, especially of a foreign government or a competing company, as in industrial espionage. And it first appeared in about 1793 from the French for (coughs) espionage or Middle French for espionier, which is to spy. Okay. And that's where that comes from. And now we're going to get into some serious espionage. All I'm saying is, you know... It's all French to me. Don't fuck with the Israelis, man. Just don't. You know, I mean, first of all, you know, the whole comeuppance of the the horrible Holocaust is never forget. Mm -hmm. Believe me when I tell you, the Israelis never forget. Man, oh, man, they play a long con. I mean, look what's going on, you know. First, would you? Pagers. Now walkie talkies, yeah. But you know what? I did hey, you don't poke the bear. No, no, no. But I, but I, I, I did some looking up because you know, Mossad is they, they, they don't screw around. Mm-mm. And if you cross the Israelis, they're writing your name down and they're waiting on you. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it goes back to the '60s where they spent time and they, you know, you know, I mean, when they started hunting all the Nazis. Simon Wiesenthal and those people that would be yeah. Nazi hunters? They were spending a lot of time in uh, South America. Yeah. Well, you know, 1960, they went down there, and there was a good movie, and I don't remember the name of the movie, um, but they went down there, and, you know, Adolf Eichmann, who was, you know, part of the, the, the protect, you know, the creator of the Final Solution, which was the eradication of the Jews, among other people that the Nazis deemed inferior, um, he was, you know, minding his time. He got while the getting was good and ended up in Argentina, and... They finally went to Buenos Aires, mm-hmm. and they kidnapped the sucker, brought him home to Israel, put him on trial, and two years later, they hung his ass. Gone. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, they didn't play games. But it's interesting because, you know, and the same thing with the, 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 um, uh, the, the Black September people that killed the Israeli athletes. Yes, in 72. Yep, and they waited a little while, and they went, and they got all of them, too. Yeah. 
And it was called the Operation Wrath of God. You know, eventually the death of the 11 Israeli athletes. They had a hit squad codenamed Bayatine, um, a bayonet. And the last one they got, and this is a, a precursor that, you know, people should have been paying more attention. <clears throat> Somebody posed as an Italian journalist to interview one of the Black September um, planners of this operation. Mm -hmm. I don't know where the guy was living. It may have been in Rome. Um, and they set up a phone interview with him. And, you know, they knew where the guy was living. So somebody from Mossad, or one of the hit squads, got into the guy's apartment. He was an explosive expert, and they rigged his telephone. This, is, this was in, I uh, have the year there. I'm not quite sure when, but um, they rigged his telephone. So when the fake reporter called up, and once he said, yes, this is, this is who you're speaking to, I'm him, they hit a remote control, and they blew his ass up from the telephone in his house. From his own phone. Yep, where they had already um, well, secreted I mean, a, a bomb in there. Yeah, I mean, you you got to understand. I mean, these guys these guys became a country um, because of what another country basically did to them. Yeah. And, you know, they took back space that was originally theirs, um, and it was recognized after World War II. Um and they're in a region where all their neighbors hate them. Pretty much, yeah. You know, so you got to have strong intelligence to protect your own, to protect your family. Absolutely. But what, what am amazes me is the long game or the planning that they're doing. Mm -hmm. First of all, it was probably the Israelis that explained to um, Hezbollah that, you know, be careful. The Israelis can break into yourself. And, and the Israelis can because every time an iPhone that, you know, impenetrable <laughs> yeah you know who do you call you you call the israelis and they can break into your phone in 25 minutes yeah you know they were the first people to be able to crack and jailbreak iphones and mm -hmm. you know or any six-year-old well fair point <laughs> yeah but you know because there's there, there was you know phones that were locked that they needed information out of mm -hmm. and the united states government couldn't do it britain couldn't do it and they you think the united Israel. states and britain couldn't do it or they were just like yeah the israelis got they, the big, it out. they got the bigger balls let's maybe. let them do it maybe um, yeah we'll, 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 we'll let them do it yeah I, I, yeah, I think it has more to do with that. Like, Israelis, like, hold my beer. And that's, right. that's how they, I mean, that's that's where they're at. They're oh, like, yeah. you kill one of us, we're killing 12 of you. Oh, yeah. See how the math works out for you. Right. And they're serious about it. They're, oh, I mean, because but how long cause their that? opponent's not caring about civilians. Right. So they're like, you know what? You you started this, you poked us. Well, you and, know, and I for, I for an eye is the Old Testament. Yeah. You know? Um, what fascinates me is... The long game, and and, and how they could, mm -hmm. you know, we're talking we're talking contemporaneous. I mean, this is this is as topical as yesterday. Rig all those pagers, mm -hmm. and put put explosives in the pagers, which were made in Taiwan. And I, I haven't figured out the article. I haven't read the articles enough to find out how Hungary got involved in this because I guess they traded they, them they were, through uh, Hungary. They were uh, a retail uh, pass through, so they were a retail pass through through Hungary. And that's where the pagers came through that retail side. So I'm sure they Is were that sold. Where they got, yeah, you know? they were sold to a wholesaler or something like that with predisposed numbers in them. And when they found out, okay, this person has this one, this one has this one, yeah, they were able to dial it up from Literally, wherever yeah. they were from yeah. and just made it happen. Because you know, all these other ones are. Just think, how many are already out there? Yeah, that are never going to go off. Because they're not going to trigger it because they're going to say that person is not a threat. Right. You know, they, that's how deep that intelligence is going. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating. And, and then, you know, so they do all the pages. Mm -hmm. And then they went to the walkie-talkies the next day. Yeah. You know, the organization you have to have to be able to sec secret explosives mm -hmm. in these pieces of technology is fascinating. Yeah, but if you were in those, and by the way, in those areas, stop using in the 1970s. I was going to say cocaine deals. I was going to say if you're in those areas, do you stop stop using the walkie talkies, and do you stop using pagers simply and because phones. of this? Right. And cell phones. I mean, because they they've obviously got into it. All right, I have five listed over okay. here. All right, if you can give a glance over here, which one do you think you would like to talk about next? Hmm. <sighs> Who's space, who's space Delta 8078? It's Space Delta 18. Okay. 
That's the one I'm not familiar with. And I'm glad you asked. Okay. I wasn't either. Okay. All right. And it is part of the Space Force. <laughs> the Space oh. Force has their own intelligence of course they agency. Do. All right. Delta 18, the United States Space Force unit that serves the National Space Intelligence Center, NSIC. It is headquartered in Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Activated June 24th, 2022. Okay. All right. Uh, it is has 350 personnel. Okay. All right. That we know of. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that admit to it, exactly. Well, it says expected. That means they don't know how many is actually there. Right. Uh, commander Colonel Marcus Starks is the commander. Deputy Director is Cheryl Richmond. All right. I didn't know this existed at all. These are secret agencies. I didn't know right. existed at all. All right. Um, it was ordered by Chief of Space Operations John W. Raymond. And uh, it, it basically does analysis of squadrons. It's kind of keeping the eye in the sky. Well, there's, um, I mean, if you look at United States um, spy agencies, there's like 12 of them, you know, maybe even more. I mean, every branch of the military has their own <laughs> military intelligence. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've got the CIA, you've got the FBI, um, y y you've got, but the, the one that I get the kick out of is the National Reconnaissance um, uh, survey uh, center, mm -hmm. and those are the people that control the satellites, and they do their own translation of um, the information, yeah. and they're probably the the least known or one of the least known that probably has some of the most clout in intelligence services, because they can retest satellites and do that whole whole shoot and match stuff. Yeah. All right, Blake, can you pull up the symbol, and I'm going to give you a little bit of time. Uh, can you pull up the emblem oh, of the National Air and Space Intelligence Center? All right, and what it, what it uses is it uses the Sphinx, of ancient Egypt symbol okay. of wisdom, knowledge, and the challenges of the national spaces will solve it uh, with the pride. So it's using the Sphinx as its logo. I'll show it to you as he's I see it, working yeah. on it. Cool. So I saw the symbol first, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Oh, okay, is that Egypt?" No, no, it's it's R. Egypt is like the Mukabarach. Yeah. So, and it, it's really, really wild. I don't know of Got people it. that even know this thing exists. That the, that the Space Force has their own the spy, Space Force spy has network? their own. Right. There it is right there. Yeah. yeah. Well, but I mean, the, a cool symbol. the Marines have their own. Navy has their own. Mm -hmm. The Army has their own. The Air Force has their own. You know, so they're all, you know, when, when you get into these territorial pissing matches that you, you see on TV shows with local local law enforcement, with, you know, um, the FBI getting involved in it, it's the same thing in military intelligence. Nobody wants to share information, which is really exceedingly counterproductive when, you know, time is of the essence. You know, it's like, why can't we all just get along and, and share the information in-house? You don't have to share it with, you know, foreign nationals, but it's it's wacky. Yeah. You know? Um. I can tell you, it has a website. It's had two commanders already. Uh, Colonel Marcus, uh, Marquise Randall was the first one. Mm -hmm. He just retired June 28th of 24. And he's he's a colonel. He was a colonel in the Air Force. And I'm going to tell you right now, he's a guy you don't want to mess with. New guy's only been in for seven. They didn't even put <laughs> a picture of the new guy. Okay. He's only been in for 70 plus days. So maybe no, really, I'm maybe like, really is a spook. He don't have a picture. He on is. File. He doesn't even have yeah. one. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe not. Yeah. He exists. All right. So what? Do you, what are some of yours? I have to choose from. Well, usually Lenny has nine thousand things well, written just, over there. We, we, well, we, we, we were uh, we were involved elsewhere. Um, I'm the one that impresses me is the research and analysis wing, which it started in 1968. Yep. And that's that small little country that has a couple of people called India. Yeah, and that grew out of intelligence failures of the uh, Sino-Indian War and the Indian-Pakistani Wars, and they handle everything, including security of India's nuclear program. So it started in the '40s or '50s. When '68. Did it? '68. Okay. '68. And you know, one of their biggest projects was Operation Smiling Buddha. Cool. And that was the secrecy of India's first nuclear test program. So that was Operation Buddha was the whole secret of them doing their um, – and the Americans were very, very harsh and wanted, wanted India to not do their tests 
because they had dug a couple of tunnels in some part of the north of the country, and they tested they tested it on their own property. You know, we go out and do it in the middle of the freaking Pacific. On you know, we we irradiate a couple of islands here. Yeah, you know, Bikini Atoll and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, and they're supposed to be some serious shit there. The Indians. Yeah, and it started, and, and this is why I, I, I kind of had to grab my notes, because I thought it started earlier. It did yeah. start with the IB, the Intelligence Bureau. Right. And, and that started all the way back in 23, and then it became the RAW right. uh, after that. Right. So I was like, okay, I think it started a little earlier, but it was it was, it was was the RAW from 68 right. on. The interesting thing is, is, you know, I got a list of, of the top 10 intelligence services, and, you know, it was annotated with, you know, like their, their biggest operations. That's where I got the Eichmann thing and the, the exploding telephone from the Munich guy. Um, but it was interesting to see that um, the Indian spy service was integral in the creation of Bangladesh. Okay. So a lot of these, a lot of these, you know, fomented, you know, I mean, like what we used to do in Central America all the time, we'd go down there and, you know, topple a, topple a government with a coup because, you know, the banana people were unhappy in the banana republics. But, it, you know, it was the creation of Bangladesh as opposed to somebody that was involved in a coup in Libya which was uh, MI6. Yeah. You know, so, you know, MI6, figure, go, go one way. So MI6, which is the military, the, the secret intelligence service is the catchphrase for all the um, British spy services. MI5 is their domestic branch, like our FBI. Yeah. Yeah. MI6 is their CIA for their international yeah. stuff. Um, you know, they, they, and they've been around since 1909. And those are the guys that cracked the Enigma code. Um, during World War II, which well, what which, was uh, that gentleman's name? That was Alan Turing. Turing, yeah, yeah, he, yeah it was yeah. a sad story. Of course, because he was homosexual, and you yeah, know, sad until story. the sixties, it was illegal to be gay. Well, I mean, he, what was that? What was the movie? Um, great movie. Um, that was oh. Blake. Do you remember that movie? It was Benjamin Cumberbatch. Yeah, Cumberbatch played Turing. It was, and and just uh, did a brilliant job. Wonderful movie. I, I can't think of it. If, if yeah. somebody fact checking. Uh, Somebody in our comments knows knows the name of that. It's absolutely brilliant. Yep. All right. It so the uh, R R A W basically sprung out of uh, in Indira Gandhi's yep. administration. Yep, for sure. Um, but it clearly had everything to do with the conflict of '65 with Pakistan. Oh yeah. So um, uh, a the imitation game. What was it? The imitation game. Imitation okay. game. Right, because they because they screwed up a lot of the information with the the war with Pakistan. Yeah. And, you know the the skirmishes with China up on the northern borders. Mm -hmm. Um, so she got pissed and created this, these guys and said, go, go, go. Yeah, the Chinese, Chinese and Pakistani borders is where this kind of really yep. kind of yep. set it set it into place. And, and a lot of people, I mean, India has, I think, 1.6 billion people. They're supposed to, they're projected in 20 years to be the most populated country in the world. Are they second to China now? They're second to China. Okay. Um, they're second to China and... With, I think it's I think its projection is twenty five to thirty years. China has the rules about limiting childhood and some well, of those they're, things. They're backing off and, of that because that screwed them. Yeah, because it's really passing them up. Yeah. Um. So, but but what they did for the twenty thirty years where they had the one child rule has affected their population growth, and India is going to pass them. Right. India, India is clearly going to pass them. No matter what China changes at this point, India is going to well, pass them. Well, it's tough to catch up like something like that. But China realizes they made a, a, a pop. Uh, they made they made a very bad mis uh, misinterpretation of the reality of it because now they're raising the retirement age for men and for women. Mm -hmm. um, so all of a sudden, you used to be able to retire earlier in China when you had a lot of people, and now they they keep raising the retirement age for the the people in right. China. All right, and, and Blake, you, you, you have it up there right now. I just lost it. Um, China's at 1,416,000,000 1, and change, and India's at 1,409,000,000. A mere seven, a mere seven they million They might catch people. them in the next two years. <laughs> next half an hour, you know, that's right. And, yeah, yeah, and, and, and third is at 336. We're that far behind. Yeah. Three, uh, we're third. In, USA, in the United States, USA. we're 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 one point one billion behind them. Yes, that's, yeah. that's a big drop off. Yeah, so, I mean that's that's a huge huge uh, yeah. difference there, uh, but that's how important this organization is, which also could be one of the most powerful intelligence agencies. 
Um, CIA is ranked number one still, right? As far as the ranking goes, but we talked about, and I stayed to the popular ones. Yeah. Um, I thought spell, Space Delta eighteen was interesting, well, so I threw that one in. Um, but uh, I think I, let's talk about our sponsors real quick, and then okay. I want to talk about. Arr, yep. arr. Maybe because it's talk about a pirate day. Talk like a pirate so day. Go to the go All to the right. museum. Right. First thing I gotta tell you is check out Coquina Coast Realty. Arr. These mateys know everything you need to know. You scurvy dog. For you land lovers. <laughs> All right. Give them a call. 904-669-7901. All right, Kaiser's Deli and Market. Get over there. You're gonna see celebrity chef Lenny Wednesday, Wednesday Thursday, Thursday, and Friday, Friday of next week. week. All right, get over there. Go see Kaisers. If you haven't been there, get your butt there. It's amazing. Yeah. All right, St. Augustine Pirate Museum. Arr! So Maeve and I went there last week. We had an yeah. amazing time. We absolutely love it every time we go. And I'm telling you, you will enjoy it each time you go. You'll see something different. Blast off the cannon. It's always fun to do. Ooh, yeah. And just enjoy yourself. They also have the Colonial Quarter, um, the old Spanish Quarter, uh, Bull and Crown, mm -hmm. Taberna, um, St. Augustine Seafood Company. These guys are uh, one of the most integral parts of St. Augustine yep. and definitely, definitely probably one of the biggest impactors on St. George Street. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Abair Kresge and Associates, the best CPAs in town. Give Billy a call over there at Abair Kresge and Associates. Meehan's Irish Pub. If you haven't been there, you haven't eaten their food, you don't know what you're missing. Check I it out. I Meehan's. think John Meehan was a little bit of a pirate. Yeah, he might have been. Yeah, he was a sailor for sure. He might have so been. I think there was a little pirate a little pirate in John Meehan as well. All right. And what's in a lot of pirates is a lot of spirits. And Citygate mm. Spirits, they know how to make spirits right, uh, right there on Sponsorship Row across from the fort. Get over there. Try their tasting tours. Amazing job. Will and his crew over there just are incredible. St. Augustine Distillery, number one distillery in, in Best in the business, the country. and it's been proven by others. We say it, but we've been... Well, we, we've been backed up by popular demand. All right. So the organization which might have the most they're employees. Getting, they're getting scary. MSS. MSS. You have that on your list, obviously. I do. They're ranked seventh, believe it or not. They're ranked seventh in yep. power, but I think they're ranked number one in... Uh, well, they're spooky. ...in staffing. So, um, and... It's the Ministry the Communist, of State Security. Yeah, Ministry of State Security in China. Um, to me, these guys, they're counterintelligence. Some of the stuff that they're doing, uh, you know, their jurisdiction includes People's Republic of China, including Hong Kong and Macau. And I would also add uh, Chinatown in Manhattan. Yeah. Oh, probably so. <laughs> oh, seriously? Yeah. Because uh, you may not be familiar with but they found out that there were Chinese prisons for dissidents in Manhattan where the MSS would have agents go and kidnap Chinese dissidents or, you know, people that were on whatever watch list the Chinese had, and they would throw them in, in, in a jail somewhere in Manhattan. And they finally just found that out and said, what the fuck? All right. The employees that we know of, do you know how many that number is? Not a clue. 110,000. Okay. That's what we know of. Right. I'm sure there's another three to everyone we know of. Yeah. So I'm saying there could be and half, a, half a million people that could possibly be working for the MSS. And I'm not going out on a limb to say a lot of them are in, in, in American universities. I wanted to see what their budget was. You know what the word came up? Uh, Undefined. Classified? Classified. There you go. Classified. They wouldn't give it to me. So Did you um, call the Chinese and say, by the way, how much you spend it on how much you spend it on spying? Yeah. Um they actually have a child agency Ooh. for safeguarding uh the national security of, of children. Okay. Um because they can't afford to lose any of them. They have a website. Uh I can tell you uh they have a website. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's really, really crazy. Um, I don't know if that's a link you want to click on. Yeah, no, no, no. If you're there, you're stuck there forever. Um, but they are a part of the Chinese, and they were formed in 1983. To me, this is the yeah. scariest group yeah. that's in our in our list here. Um, you know, and I was thinking about it, yeah. and the United States 
because we're such a melting pot, mm -hmm. it might be easier to be an agent coming from the U.S., but Chinese people look like Chinese people. Mm -hmm. that's, not a, that's not a prejudice statement. That's not a bias statement. But Chinese people look like Chinese people. Mm -hmm. the, if you say you're an American, you could look like a Chinese person. Right. You could look like a Japanese person. But the amount of like Americans... The amount of Americans, percentage-wise, that are in China is much, much lower than the amount of Chinese. Yeah, you would stand out a lot percentage. more in China. And, and yeah. I can tell you, I've been to China, and I'm a towering five foot eight on a good day with good shoes, and I was tall. Get me a plane ticket, baby. I'm going. You are above yeah. average. Oh my goodness! Well, you are above so, average. Yeah. So, so, so right now, China is actually planning on implementing a social credit score check for 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 all of its citizens. It it, it, it it's basically like a normal credit score for us, but 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 but, 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 but instead of having like good numbers for like uh, for paying off our bills, make 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 sure we're properly using our credit cards. It's it's to make sure that that the that, that the Chinese that the Chinese citizen are, are like following their laws and supporting them wholeheartedly. And actually, there is a quiz online that the the, the 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 like some American made up where you can actually pretend to. To take to take like a quiz to see, oh how how good your China's social credit score. That's hmm. do, 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 do you guys want to try to take it? See how no. so good you are. No, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want my no. I, I to me this is a group, um, you know that is infiltrating all over the world. Right. Um, and it actually started in 1927 as the CCP. Right. Uh, the central uh, uh, committee, committee, and you know, and then it didn't formally become the MSS until '83. Right. But the growth of this over the last twenty years is ridiculous. Well, I mean, I, I think to a large degree, it still percolates in Russia, but certainly in China, um, where you know the secret police. Neighbors are afraid to talk to anybody. Neighbors will rat out neighbors. You know, like back to the days of the Gestapo and the Nazis where everybody was spying on their neighbors or, or it was they, they thought they could protect themselves by ratting out somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that it's pervasive in China, would be my perception, is that it's pervasive in China. I think it's still a little pervasive in Russia with the, the, the KGB, um, you know, which is, by the way, the... Uh, Federal Security Services. It's no longer the KGB um, or the GRU, which is the mm -hmm. Army's version of their spy service. Um, but, you know, in, in a lot of those totalitarian or totalitarian adjacent countries, mm -hmm. the trick is, you know, rat somebody else out to protect yourself. Well, and I think you did the top 10 agencies. Yeah. All right. So where did... The MSS land on that list. They were, believe it or not, they were uh, seventh. They were seventh. After after the German BND. Okay. Which, for those of you scoring at home, I wrote it down. Bundesnachtricht ten distant. That's the BND, the German, yeah. German spy service. Yeah, anyway. I actually I actually went to... Oh, hold up the note like this in front of your face? Come on. I got to read it, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, that's, that's our as, Lenny. It's as telegenic as I get. Uh, you want the Lenny. information or you want my face? You know what I look like? That's our Lenny. Um, mm. But I, I read some stuff about the German side yeah. and like it becoming, uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize how young of a country Germany is. Yeah. So Germany didn't become a Especially country until, until like the late 1800s. Yep. It's actually younger than the United States. People think the United States is a young country. Mm. Germany's almost 100 years younger yeah. than the U.S. And I don't think people realize that. Yeah, their, their spy service started in 1956, mm -hmm. and they're big, on, they're big on wiretapping and electronic surveillance mm -hmm. is, is, is what their you know, claim to fame is. You know. yeah. But you got rounding out the top 10, you got Australia at 9 and um, the French at 10. Mm -hmm. But the Australians are, you know, the Australians are moving up in the ranks. So give, give us ten, are... ten, nine, eight. Give us the list coming backwards. Do you have that written sure, out that you, way? You got, you got the uh, DGSE. Oh, that, or the what? DGSI. That's France. Okay, so that's nine. That's number nine. That's ten. 
Okay, that's Director number 10. for General and Internal Security. Okay, well, it was given numbers with this, Lenny. Okay. I, I know Nine, you're new on this podcast. I started thing. at the bottom. You I know, the bottom. But, you, but you go number nine. nine Have you ever seen number, David Letterman? Number nine. Thank you. Is the Australian Secret Intelligence Service. They handle the intelligence, uh, foreign intelligence, and they've been around since 1952. Okay. Eight. Interservices Intelligence is Pakistan since 1948. All right, and these what I what I read about this rankings because I think I was on the same page you were on, and it's the most powerful in the world by these rankings. Is that yes? Is that the yes. way I read it? Yeah, okay, they're, they're, all right. I yeah. want to make sure it was the yeah. same list. Yeah. Okay. Uh, seven, seven is the Ministry of State Security, China. That's been since 1983. Uh, Number six. BND the Here, Federal I'll help Intelligence you Service. This. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Are you going to give an explanation on that? or The BND is the German Federal Service, Federal Intelligence Service, the Germans. BND. All right. Number five. Mossad. Mossad. They're scary. Okay. They're scary good. Who's Mossad? That's Israel. Okay. That's You, know, you don't know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's, I'm acting like I don't need to okay. know. Okay. Well, then you got the Shin Bet. I, got, which I, is, I don't have enemies there. Well, that's a good thing. Number four. Is India, Research and Analysis Wing. Yeah. From 1968 on. The R.A.W. Yep. All right. Number three. The Ruskies. Oh. The Federal Security Services. It used to be the KGB. Now it's fancy, the Federal Security Services. Mm -hmm. GRU is the military version of it, the uh, Russian Army. Numero duo. Number two. The Secret Intelligence Service of the British government. Primarily MI6, MI6, which is their international branch, as opposed yeah. to MI5 is their well, domestic internal, branch, yeah. or synonymous with the FBI. Yeah, so and MI5 then, would equate to our FBI. Correct. MI6 would equate to our number oh, one. Wait, wait, hold on. To drum roll, drum roll. Uh, Central Intelligence Agency headquartered in Langley, Virginia. USA. 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 That's 1947, and that was the, it, it grew out of the OSS. Wild Bill Donovan who created a spy service for World War II, and it was the OSS, and those were the spies that were um, coordinating with the French underground and dropping spies into Europe. Um, and Wild Bill Donovan was a wacky guy. He was a wild man, hence the name. Yep. And um, he created the OSS, the Office of Strategic Services, which became the CIA. Where, where is, what is the, their center called? It's Langley, Virginia. What is the name of their center for intelligence? It's named after a president. Well, now it would be Bush. George W. Bush. Yeah, yeah. Not George W. No, no, H. W. George Bush. George H. W. Bush. Right, because he was now, a director. Now, why? He was a director of the why Central would Intelligence that be? Agency. There you go. Yeah. In the yeah. 70s, yeah. he was the director, director of the CIA. CIA. Yep. He's the only president that has been the director of... Yeah. Of the CIA. Yeah. Mike, Mike, Mike Pompeo tried, but he, he didn't get too far in his in his yeah. presidential ambition. No, he didn't. All right. But, 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 but. You but. know what I get a kick out of is, you know, you're driving on the Baltimore-Washington Parkway, and there's an exit for, for Langley, for the CIA headquarters. There's an exit off of the freaking highway. It's not well hidden. All right. um, of course, you got to go through a bunch of gates to get to mm -hmm. it. And right. then right after that is the exit for Fort Meade. The CIA's motto. Are you ready for this? I am. I'm sitting down. Are you? It's hard to tell sometimes. No, well, I am. All right. The work of the nation, the center of intelligence. That's it. All right. Their unofficial motto, motto is John 8, 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall shit, set you set, free. Shit, make you free. Yep. Shall make you free. All right. Um, we talked about China and how many employees they have. Yeah. CIA, it was 110 for China. CIA, take a guess. And I'll let Blake take a guess, too. 65,000? Blake. What, what do you want me to guess on? Uh, glad you're paying attention, producer. Hey. Um, <laughs> I, 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 know, I know you're putting in your bets for tonight, so I'm sorry I interrupted. No, tonight's, uh, tonight's game sucks. Yeah, but you, that doesn't mean yeah, you don't Aaron bet Rogers on it. Is over that's that's, 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 how, <laughs> right, you that's how you make the game better is by betting. You, you, I'm glad you're not a gambler because... I My ain't, mentality I ain't is taking this one I want to I want to if I want to watch a game that I know sucks I have to put a bet in or I'm not going to watch it. Yeah. So um all right Blake take the pats I the told points. you I told you China's MSS has over 110,000 employees. The CIA 
the equivalent of that in the United States, how many employees do you think it, it would have? 65,000. That's, exact, that's exactly what Lenny said. So you both tied. So congratulations on that. No one gets a point. It's 21,575. That's all. Huh. That we know of. Right, exactly. That, 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 are, that are on the payroll in their own name. What's interesting, though, is the CIA will recruit out of college. Mm-hmm. And there was some intimation that the CIA would actually recruit out of high school. Mm-hmm. And then when you get hired by the CIA, they send you to their spy school. So they teach you how to be a spy. They've got their own training facility. And then depending on which direction you go in, then it's levels on levels on levels. Because they've got a couple of black ops groups as well. Mm-hmm. And by law, in theory, because in practice I don't know that I'm necessarily buying it, the CIA cannot operate on American soil. They're mm-hmm. a foreign intelligence gathering organization, and they can't do their gigs in the United States. All right. Um, what I tell you the budget was for China? It's unknown. It's classified. Classified. Yeah. The United States, and this is as of 2013, no numbers are accurate right as of 2013 what would you say the budget is for those 21,000 employees that's on the books in 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 the as budget? of 13 11 years ago sorry i just whacked my microphone there i don't know 25 million blake what do you think it is i'm gonna say three billion three, three billion billion three billion you okay. have 25 million well on the books he has three billion a lot of slush funds that they can draw out of Blake wins this one. Okay. All right. The actual number is fifteen billion. Okay. That we know of, as of twenty thirteen. So what do you think it so might my be now? Twenty five million was just petty cash. Your twenty five million it might one run a thousand of those twenty twenty one thousand. Might. It's petty cash. Petty cash. Petty cash. Yeah. That's paper clips. Yeah. Paper clips is what that is. Yeah. So. All right. That's a lot of money. Yeah, what else exactly. Back here? It's, it's crazy, crazy numbers. All right, I have one more I want to get to, um, but I wanted to All read right. this. Okay. Do you guys uh, have any fictional, uh, like, like intelligence agencies, like, 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 like the best ones in hit, like the best ones in fictional history? No, but I've got a lot of. Um, um, you got to go Shield. Yeah, you have to go. go. Shield. You got to go Shield okay. as being the number one fictional, in my opinion. Plus Cobra as well, and GI Joe. Yeah, right. Cobra and G.I. Joe. All right, here's, here's the thing. Oh, who are they? As of 2013, the CIA had five priorities. All right? Um, if you guys can name two of the five, I'm going to give you a victory. All right? I'm going to give each of, you, each of you three guesses. Priorities. They have priorities. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I think... I think I think you'll get three. American security. I mean, you know, I, I don't know how to phrase this necessarily. Mm, I'm, I'm not giving the point because it's not close. I, it needs to be a little more specific. All right. I'm, I'm going to clean that up if you want to waste another guess. Blake. I'm going to say safeguarding on national secrets. Mm, I think all of them fall in that. Uh, all five of them. I, they're more specific is what okay. I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to give you two more chances, more specific chances. Um, counterterrorism. Bing. That's the one. You you cleaned up what you were saying. Yeah. It fell in that category. You cleaned yeah. it up. Yeah. You get a point. All right. Counterterrorism is number one of their five priorities. All right. Blake. Uh, conv- uh, into the microphone. I am in the microphone. Hello. We don't need to yell. Yeah, yeah I'm going to yell. Just, just, just hold the microphone to your chin. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say uh, conduct convert uh, act, a co- covert action. There you go. Still too vague. Need to be more pers- specific. Disinformation. Disinformation. Hmm. There's got to be something that we can massage into that. To, to, yeah, uh, I think that might fall under one of these categories. Blake, last one. And you uh, tell me how, where you think disinformation yeah. falls. Last guess for you. I'm going to say stop aliens. Stop Stopping aliens. the aliens. Okay. All right. All right. Here are the here are the five. Counterterrorism was number mm-hmm. one. Number two was non proliferation proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. Fair enough. Okay. Yep. Could fall into the alien thing. Um, <laughs> indications of and warnings for senior policymakers. I don't understand and that warnings one. Warnings for senior policymakers. All right. Keeping people from being blackmailed. 
Um, I don't know. I, that one I don't get. I don't understand why that's one of our top five. That one, that one okay. was the most confusing to me. Okay. Number four, counterintelligence. So it basically is like, right. how do we match up with everyone else that we right. just matched? All right. And number five, and I think this is very, very important, and, and the MSS and these two going at it is cyber intelligence. Hell yeah. Yeah. So those are the five priorities of uh, of the CIA. And I would think of the 110,000 MSS workers, they've probably got 20,000 of them. They're sitting in computer farms that are just hacking and hacking and hacking mm -hmm. um, or writing code or trying to submit malicious code into the electric grid or the, the other things that are run and controlled by computers in this country so that when the Chinese get pissed at us, they don't need an EMP. They just need to put a line of code in there, push a button, and our you know, power plants close. Mm -hmm. All right. I have one more I want to talk about, mm -hmm. and it's one of the newer ones. Do you have one that you need to get in? We have two minutes. No, no. I went, I went older. I went to the Civil War and the Revolutionary War for, for um, Washington's Culper Ring and the Confederate um, Secret Service. All right. The Confederate Secret Service. Do you believe the Confederate Secret Service knows where all the gold went from the Confederacy? Um, cause somebody I think, did, but I, think, I don't know who does anymore. I think anymore. Jefferson Davis and them knew. Yeah. Because he worked very closely with that group, Yeah, and that gold disappeared. And a lot of it was in Canada, yeah. or in England, as a matter of fact. Yeah. They, I, worked, they worked via Canada and England, though they had an operation in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. All right. This is a group that I think I'm the most afraid of because I think they're the, the most radical. They really only target three other countries. Okay, Israel, the United States, and... Nope. Japan, South Korea, and the United States. Oh, North Korea. North Korea, 100%. Go. Yeah. And it's the RGB, the Reconnaissance General Bureau. And everyone else you get some numbers from. <laughs> the Hermit State ain't sharing? Um, North Korea was established in 2009. That's about the only information we have from them. Okay. All right. Um, there's defectors that have come to the U.S. or come to Japan, mm -hmm. and we've gotten some information from that. But uh, as far as the nastiest group and a group you don't want to work for, I cannot think of a worse group and a more murderous group than the RGB. Did you read anything about these guys? No, I forgot about North Korea because I was staying with, you know, like mainstream countries that, you know, exist on the world stage mm -hmm. as opposed to the hermit kingdom. Yeah. All right. Uh, the foundations of North Korea cyber operations were built in the 1990s after North Korea computer scientists returned from travel abroad opposing... Uh, proposing to use the internet as means of spy mm -hmm. and enemies and attack on militarily uh, superior opponents. So they specifically targeted the United States and South Korea in the 1990s. Makes sense. All right. Even though this organization didn't come to be until 2009. Um, students were sent abroad to China to participate in top computer science programs. They specifically targeted uh, computers. Sure. And that's where their hacking is. So their first department is training and technical assistance. Second department is military intelligence. Third department, signals, intelligence, and computer hacking. That is their third mission is computer hacking mm -hmm. from North Korea. All right. Sure. Um, the fifth department, there's no fourth department. I don't know why. It goes <laughs> from third to fifth department to sixth department to seventh department. All right. I don't know why there's not a fourth department. Well, it is. It's the black ops, and they don't want to talk about it. Yeah, I, I, I guess it's like Fight Club. Um, <laughs> it, this deals with uh, foreign to intelligence uh, to South Korea. Um, basically, that's where some of the assassination plots come out mm -hmm. of that department. Mm -hmm. um, sixth department is military and policies. Seventh department is logistics. So Bureau 21 is the RGB's main cyber warfare unit. They have a warfare unit just for the Internet. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, I, would, I, I, I wouldn't doubt that we don't and, you know, that, um, well, look, you know, half the hacking's going on and, and the Iranians are, are mad over all this, too, you know? Yeah. So, and they said there was many, many uh, North Korean spies 
arrested up until 2017. And then uh, they were like, we're losing too many good people. They went almost 100% cyber after that. Okay. You know what their budget is? Oh, my gosh. Blake went topless. Oh, my goodness. And the show is... Things have went out of hand. I am so glad we don't have a studio camera. Oh, my goodness. It would have been scary for everyone involved. Scary for me. Um, But I'll tell you right now, guys, we appreciate it. This is a fun show. If we're not here tomorrow, you'll know it's because of this show. Right. Um, Don't come looking for us because we don't want you guys to disappear, too. Right. Um, We'll be in North Korea. All right. This is Bollocks, Talks, and Tangents. Thank you, Lenny. Thank you, Blake. Please put your clothes back on. Please. (laughs) I almost said this is uncommon ground. I'm so distraught right now. We'll see you next week. Share this show. Goodbye.